Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, Sahar is one of the top real estate agents in Houston, Texas. She's someone I've worked with for years, someone who I am always excited uh, when a buyer's working with her because I know they're gonna have a great experience. I know there's gonna be no drama. I know they're getting a good deal. And that's the perfect thing. However, much to my disappointment, as well as yours sometimes, not everybody can work with you. So if you were, and that's because you're not buying in Houston, let's say you're buying in Maine or uh, Tennessee or Alaska, you can still work with me, <laughs> but Sahar will not drive there. Yes. What is that I, about Sahar? Uh, I have three kids. <laughs> okay. Darn. Okay. When the kids are grown, we'll get you in all the States. So we were talking about this and I was like, look, if your best friend was buying out of state, okay. Mm -hmm what are the three tips you would give them for looking for a realtor? And of course the heart's like, I would just have them call me and I would refer them to an agent that I researched. So guys, that's always an option. You can call Sahar, she'll do the research um, and, and do the referral. But let's talk about the three things that you would advise your BFF to look for. So I look for, I tell her to look for an agent that is working and productive in the market. Not that they sell one house a year. That's number yeah. one. They want to be so, an expert in the market. So uh, how can they figure out if they're an expert? What are some signs that you think people, because look, there's a lot of realtors that will do Instagram and they'll be posing in front of cars being like dollar dollar deals and they yeah. do no business. So yeah. what are some signs that they're doing yeah. business? We are in the age of information. You can type their name on Google mm -hmm. and go from there. And there's many websites, Zillow, Google, their local MLS, you know, if you, you know, the Virginia, I mean, whichever MLS they're in, make sure they are producing agents. They're working the market, you know? So that's so, okay. And so just so you guys know, generally Zillow in most parts of the country, there's a couple pockets where they don't have the best data, but in most of the pockets, most of the country, what I'll do is I'll just put in the realtor's name and I'll put in Zillow and the state. And it will show you that realtor's page and it will show you how much business they've done in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. That's a huge indicator. So personally, I would argue that, you know, if someone's doing one house, two house, three houses a year, they're not an expert because they're not getting their hands in the deals enough. They're not working with enough, enough other agents to really understand what's going on. Yeah. You know, real estate is hands-on experience and the market changes. So you might have sold 30 years ago, but you don't know the market today. So you wanna be current with the market condition. So you wanna okay. have somebody that is current with the market conditions. So Sahar, last year, you're a solo agent, which means she doesn't have a team under her. Just to give people an idea of what to look for, how many, my hand's all weird, how many houses did you sell in 2022? 68 went on the MLS. Okay, I'm curious why you said what, okay, went on the MLS, some, which makes some, me wonder what some, wasn't some on homes, the MLS. Yeah, some <laughs> homes don't go on the MLS if you're not doing it directly and you're referring it somebody out. So it's about 70 deals. Okay, so 70, so that's, so guys, that's a great number. 70 is on the high side. Yes, average <laughs> but, dreams are what, 12 a year? I don't even think the average is that high. I think the average is literally like three to four because there's so many real estate agents across the country that, you know, have their license and just don't really produce. And you brought up one of the really good traps is people will say, you know, we see it in lending too. They'll go, well, I've been doing this for 40 years. And it's like, you've done it for 40 years, but you've done a total of eight houses. Like you're not an expert. Yes. So it's yes. really how many transactions they're closing. And then also with the team aspect because i think the teams can be deceiving what do you think yeah. of that yes if you're working with a team generally you're not working with the name like who's mm -hmm. listed so let's just say sahar katib realty team and i it's not you're not working with sahar you're going to be working with somebody that's a beginner or, or you know like they don't know what they're doing so it's just going to go under their name but you're not really working with the person so you want to google you want to research the person you are working with well, and you want to make sure too, because sometimes, because we're saying like, look, you want to go for people who do a lot of volume. So you might see an agent where you're like, oh, they did 300 transactions based on what Jen and Sahara are saying. That's a great number. Okay. However, if they have six team members, that means that really it's seven agents doing that using one person's brand, 
exactly. you know, and, and you may not get that. That's why I've always liked Sahar is because she doesn't have that team where I have to be like, Oh, Sahar, your buyer's agents killing me. Like they did this, this and that. Exactly. So, exactly. So when you work with me, you work directly. Do I have leverage people helping me in the back end? Yes, I do which is, you know, you've, you've worked with them as well, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, I have I you know, somebody on the transaction, like on the paperwork, helping me out. Cindy. And then somebody on the road, Cindy. And then, you know, somebody on the road that helps me. And want to give them comfort that it's not going to be, hey, I'm just sending somebody with you. Even the person yeah. that I work with, they have to reflect the same values that I do. And we're all on a three-way text message or on the same email. So I'm always involved in every step of the way. But nobody else writes contracts or negotiate for you or talk with you other than me. So that's something you guys want to watch out for. So when you're looking for that agent that does a lot of business, one of the questions you want to ask is, will you be negotiating on my behalf? And if they go, oh, Polly on my team will, well, great. What are Polly's numbers? How long has Polly been doing this? You know, what's Polly's negotiation? Because if all the reviews say that, you know, Barbara Jean's the best negotiator, but you're working with Polly, exactly. you're not getting Barbara Jean. Exactly. So, exactly. So you research, research, and make sure you interview the person that you're going to be working with and see his communication level and how he okay. can interact. And that's at the beginning before you sign any buyer's rep, any, you know, any commitment with them. So I've got two comments I'm going to make just to see your reaction. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll look up with uh, clients, we'll look up realtors production and we do it usually if I've heard something that's a red flag to me and I'll be like, Hey, like they've closed two houses in two years and they'll say, well, they told me they only really want to work with people they can take their time with. What do you think of that statement? Uh, <laughs> okay, That's I'm blown honest. away. One, I'm blown away. You caught me off guard. <laughs> so one, you caught me. If two houses, they like they like to take their time, Sahar. I know, but taking your time, I know and, it's ridiculous, right? I, you know how how like take your time and take. I always say our time is according to our client's time. So yeah. If they're, you know, they want to move fast, we move fast. If they want to walk like a turtle, I walk like a turtle because right. I'm working for them with them, not for right. them, we with them, you know, so whatever they want to do, I would walk with them. But two houses, that's, you know, like, let's just say you show that's somebody a job. every single day, how long you're going to show him two, three hours, they're going to get tired. Then you have the whole day left. What are you doing the whole day? That's a very valid point. You know, and I, so, I, you know we. <laughs> so I mean, like, I'm just gonna say they took the two houses took a year for them to find. But let's say every day they showed them two houses every day. But even though not everybody goes every day, so what are you doing the rest of the day? Yeah, they're not a full time agent. I mean, it's that simple. And exactly. you know, there's different ways to sugarcoat it. Like, well, I only work with my friends. I only work with special people. But the bottom line is, they're not a full time agent. They're not an expert in the area, and. You know, the seller's going to pay the same to the real estate agent, whether they're an expert or not an expert. So why aren't you getting the expert? Exactly. So um, there was something else I was going to say and now I forgot. OK, well, let's go to the next one and, and I'm sure I'll remember it. So, so OK, so number one, expert. Number two in the area. Number two is the agent communication. We we're talking about it and then you shift it back. So com the communication level with your agent is very important. So if you text an agent or you call an agent and they return your call a day later, that should be a red flag. So a day later, okay, but let's let's be real because I do have to say there's people who like to call and text in the middle of the night. Yeah, okay, I'm or like day 24 hours later. Let's just okay, okay 24 okay. hours later. So to be specific, when I say a day, if it's 12 o'clock the next day at 12, you know, like right night until midnight the next day. So I'm always referring to a day in 24 hour spam, so you know. I always tell people that if they don't, if they're not responsive in the beginning, they're never going to get any better because it's the courtship period before you start showing them houses. So, you know, because we hear we, we hear so often, you know, I called my real estate agent um, and they 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 didn't get back to me for a week. Yeah. Which unless, unless they have an emergency, they're in a hospital or, you know. I mean, if you lose your phone, you and me, we know we're in this age. If we lose the phone, the next day we go buy another one. 
nobody oh. is waiting a week, you know? No, so. and we're, ch we're checking our voicemail from like pay phones, like whatever we can find, like we're going to get in there or someone from our team's going to get in there to get those messages. So there and, isn't. And it boils down to something, uh, Jennifer here, it boils down to a character that you have. It's not about the response. It boils down to how much you care about the people you're working with or being in the service industry. That is, that is something you can't plant into somebody. It comes with you as a person if you have that core value. If you care about what you're doing and you enjoy it, you know, even if you're on vacation, you're mm -hmm. still responding to people because these people yeah. trusted you and anytime, you, wherever you are. And you're the same way. You can be hiking and you text me back. like, And you can simply say, hey, I'm, you know, at this moment, yeah. I'm not on, you know, whatever you want to disclose. I'm in dinner, whatever, you know, like, yep. I will get back with you. Like that response means a lot to the people, you know. I sent you pictures from the beach yesterday. I was like, I'm watching waves. Exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. exactly. So your agent that's going to be working with you, you want them to be, you know, there with you. Even, you know, even if they're not available to talk to you at the moment and write you a contract or answer the question, just be there for you every step of the way. It becomes a relationship like friendship. So we think that, okay, so I think we both can agree that within 24 hours, but then also like, look, if someone wants a house, you know, I know that if someone's calling me, for example, and it's like a first time uh, consultation, I'm usually trying to get them on the calendar or, you know, it might take 24 hours to call back because my priority is always going to be, you know, if I have a client that's like, Jen, I need two letters because I'm writing an offer on a house if you have a client that wants to see a house or get in contract, you're going to be responding even quicker because exactly. you want to make sure. Right. So if someone so basically everyone who's watching this guys, Sahar closed 70 houses last year and she's getting back to people. A lot of times buyers go, Oh, well, they're really busy. And I'm like, they did three deals. They're not busy. They're just not responsive. And some people just aren't responsive. It's like full voicemail. Does that one push you over the edge? That one pushes yes. me over the edge. Yes, 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 exactly. And and it's Ugh. not their, it's not their, I don't know, they're not invested in the business or they're mm -hmm. invested in their clients. Or we go back to like, are they full-time agent? Are they not full-time agent? All that, you know, it goes back. That's why I say communication or responsiveness is a big key. If we are in process of a transaction or we are looking in person, like we started the search in mm -hmm. person, not just the window shopping or the introduction stage you know it should be within the hour the response that's me personally yeah. you know within the hour um but i'm talking about if you just reaching out to an agent that you don't know and you text them or call them they didn't answer within 24 hours that should be a red flag yeah i agree with that and it's interesting because sometimes you know i'll help clients find real estate agents and i can have a client that's you know fully underwritten fully approved ready to shop has a house in mind, right? And I'll call five agents. It will be amazing. There might be one out of the five that actually calls me back. One. Yeah. What is, uh, real estate is the only industry, guys, where you'll literally see people walk away from piles of money. It is mind boggling to me. Yes. Um, okay, sorry, rant. Okay, third. <laughs> you know I ran what's the third thing so we went through it a little bit when we said expert and you know research the agent so we've talked about how the agent you know works and how much they do you know their production and if they are the one that's going to be handling or working with you directly so right. those are you know kind of we mix them up together is researching the agent make sure they are an expert so that will be my third one I mean if well you and reviews review. right because because reviews are so critical because here's the thing you might let's say you find three agents that are all top agents but they're going to have different personality types Absolutely. you know and that's going to be something you want to know and sometimes we'll see that someone has big numbers but it's because they have an investor that's just feeding them business and that's very different than a first time home buyer type agent um i've got to bring up one thing so hard well okay so hold on guys so look at reviews go to zillow yelp Sahar was telling me, tell them about the Houston Association thing, because I thought that was really cool when you told me about that. So Houston Association uh, of Realtors, we have a platinum level agent. And that's mm -hmm. that's going to be like something simple that agents can subscribe into it. I think it's like $125 a year. So that gives us the ability to 
once we close the deal to send directly to the, like the HAR sends it directly to the client. That way we can get reviews from the clients and we you don't edit, you don't get edited. Like we can't edit it or play with you it. You can't pick and choose. Like you can't decide like, uh, Bob kind of hated me. We're not yeah. sending him a exactly. review. Otherwise they kind of drop you like from the program, like it's, you know, it kicks you out. Um, so you have to be very transparent. And I, I work on transparency. Um, and that will tell you a lot because that will tell you, is that agent good in with veterans? You know, are they good with yeah. first home buyers? Are they good with, you know, just luxury? I mean, what are they doing? You know, so you mm -hmm. want to, every review will tell you the address itself. So the address, oh, wow. you know, with the client's name and, you know, the review, and then you can read and then click on the address and then go find the house. So it tells you a lot of information where, you know, and I think information and makes, you know, in this age makes us kind of, I would say as a client that comes to me, gives them the power to choose, you know, who they want. Right. To work with. right. And it's important. And so it's like, you know, if you guys are looking at something and you're like, I can't find a review anywhere for this person. I think that's a red flag. I don't know how you can be in 2023 and be doing a good job and not have a review. Like we do reviews of hamburger restaurants. Mm -hmm. Like this is the biggest purchase someone's going to oh, make. Like they're oh. going to have reviews. Exactly. And I, I, you know, as we all know, we're all on social media. So mm -hmm. you go on social media these days and you see everybody like marketing themselves and they're using, you know, like they're walking into homes and marketing are they really selling those homes? That's All right. So Ooh. compare and contrast, you know, compare and contrast. Are they going yeah. and doing shooting a video in there or are they really selling this kind of home, you know? So I think, you know, you should just, you know, you should just Google and like do your research. Research is, yeah. you know, it gives you, you know, it gives you the power. I mean, the, you know, information the age is the best for this, you know, like before and before 30 years ago, I don't think all this existed. So people were working in the dark. Nowadays, okay. the younger people, you know, like they have the way to find out if they want. Don't be lazy. Look, because that, as you said, it's one time that a buyer or seller, they buy or sell a home, maybe two in their lifetime, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not an mm -hmm. everyday thing. You want that process to be as smooth as possible. Right. And, you know, and this other thing, when you want, you don't want to overpay for a house. You know no. that you don't need to so look look you know make sure that the person you're working with look further and make sure they know what they're doing and don't blindly trust i yeah. mean i'm just gonna throw that in there because sometimes people go well my cousin used them and i'm like that's cool your cousin was their first sale yeah like and i'm not slamming new realtors because there can be great new realtors but if someone's telling you that they're an expert and they've sold a house like you know never blindly trust a referral Oh my God, Sahar, we're going to have to do a video, not today, clearly, but we're going to have to do a video about how to spot fakers because we have it in the mortgage industry too. Like we've got all these people on YouTube that are like teaching people about mortgages, yes. but they don't actually do them. And exactly. you have the same thing in real estate. We do a lot. And it it's just overwhelming when you see like all these videos and they look like they're selling mansions or like they're doing so much business and I go look them up on purpose. Like yeah. I have that curiosity. I don't bash them. I don't go do anything. I just, I'm like wondering, I'm like, seriously, how do they have the time to be on video all the time yep. and doing nice videos? Not like just a two minute video, like doing yeah. a full production video and still do the real estate that, you know, do because I know yeah. how the schedule goes and then figure it out later. I see like they did three, four transactions, but they're posting every day. Yeah, you know? they're posting every house they've ever walked into, making it look like it. it's interesting. It's the whole fake it till you make it. But sometimes mm -hmm. they're just fakers. So, OK, well, Sahara, thank you. I know you have lots of contracts to write today. Um, you want to every, them, of course. <laughs> I am excited about that. The buyers are excited about that. Um, so anyone who's looking in Houston, just call Sahar, make your life easy. Um, if you guys are looking for a realtor, definitely look at those tips. If you're exhausted and can't handle it, just call Sahar. She'll help you out. But thank you for watching. And well, we'll do another one, Sahar. I think it'll be fun. Thank you. Fakers. We'll do Snarky Sunday. Okay. Bye, bye. Sahar. Bye.